How you going, people? Man, that's a pretty good one. Um, so this guy is a father who's driving like a maniac, wrecks his car, hurts his son, and when medical comes because he's drunk, which is probably why he's driving like a maniac, pulls out a knife, tries to slash the firefighter's neck, and then the cops shoot him multiple times in front of his son and wife, and this is just one of those bucket calls that you show up and it's like, Ah, you got an overturned vehicle, go out there, call medical, give some assistance, take a report, no big deal. And it turns to shit. So here we go. So this is the body cam footage of uh, a shooting on January 11th, 2022. I'm going to pop through here. Uh, Rayleigh Police responded to report overturned vehicle. Officers dispatched call 911, including class uh, overturned vehicle, forced him off the road, appeared to be intoxicated. Okay, so you think you're going to drunk driving accident. No big deal. And uh, here's a cop pulling up. I'm going to bump it through here because I kind of know what's going to happen here. Somebody in there right now? Where is he? He just kicked. He just kicked the window. Off. Okay, some people wearing a mask, some people not wearing a mask. We got anybody out? The driver just got here. I just got here. All right. The driver of the vehicle is up here. The driver of that vehicle? Left hand side of that little boy. Laying okay. it down. Yeah. So normally, when you end up on a on a vehicle overturn and somebody's drunk, normally you'll have a, a bystander there saying the guy ran off this way. Uh, this guy is. What do they call them now? What, what's a good term to call somebody that comes into the country illegally and, and violates the laws? Uh, whatever you call them. Uh, this guy, uh, hell, I don't even know what to call him. We'll just call him the driver, the drunk driver. Uh, kind, of start, kind of start to see it, bro. Uh, hey, we got somebody coming for you. How many people are in this vehicle? Where are you hurt? Where's your dad? I don't look at you. Okay, so this guy appears to be pretty much in pain with uh, back injuries. Dad's up here? Yeah. Okay, how many people? How many people are in this vehicle? Four in this vehicle. All right. You, you, your dad. And where, where's the fort? Is that, is that your little brother right there? Okay. Okay, so this guy was driving like an idiot, drunk, with four people in a car and this little kid. Great guy. Hey, where you hurt at? Where you hurt at? You're back. Okay, how old are you? 20. <laughs> 20. Okay, I wonder, I wonder if all these... I wonder if they have car insurance. I wonder if they have medical insurance. I wonder if uh, they even report in income. Well, never mind. Let's just take the signal. Where are you off the road? That's how you got this. Okay, come, come, come to this side for me, okay? He's finally a toxic. Okay, so this is dad holding his kid. How old are you? Hey! Okay, we're, we're getting cut. Because he's a good dad. He's going to hold his kid. After a witness said he was driving like over 100 and flipped the car and hurt his other son and endangered everybody on the highway. And now he's going to pull out a knife. But he was holding his kid. You, you see, you'll see this in the news. CNN will be posing the picture of him holding his child. This poor illegal immigrant uh, crossed the border for a better life, holding his child. Child, and the cops killed him for no reason. Okay, that that would be the CNN. Hey, okay, we're we're getting cut. Hey, Tranquilo. I don't know if that means calm down. I know a little bit of Spanish, not a much, but Aquilo, I think is what he's saying. We're gonna figure it out. You need to sit down for me. Listen. Hey. Siete, se por favor. We need we need an ambulance here, okay? Aquí mandamos nosotros. Por favor, siete, se. Okay, está bien. Por favor, siete, se. Siete say, uh, callete is what I used to say means shut up. Silencio, silencio means don't talk. Callete was like a rude or kind of sharp version. Tell him to shut up. I'm not sure what he said here. Eso fue lo que hice. 
Uh, it looks like she's like just going to set up a tent and start making this home. Hell, the car's turned over. We got shelter. Okay, so now we have mom yelling and screaming. Probably you were driving like a maniac. I told you to stop. Look what you did. I'm, I'm assuming because that's if she was speaking English, that's what she I'd be hearing. It's your fault. Why did you do this? You're an asshole. Blah. Get everything stirred up now that other people are there to protect her. She's gonna. She wasn't saying that before. Pull over, stop, and get her kids out of there. No, no. She she picked this guy, and now she's the victim. So when you see a, a a man striking and hitting things and yelling and screaming, we call that a clue. This isn't going to go well. Please, we also have one male here who's highly intoxicated. He's drunk and high. I'm, I'm trying to figure out. We're working on it, okay? Hey. Listen, hey, we have, we have an ambulance coming. She got RFD pulling up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This dude's like, I'm about to go get my motherfucking statement. <laughs> and sometimes that's why it's just easier. I mean, nowadays I'd just say, hey, show me your license, snap a picture, and uh, what's your phone number? And I'd get it on tape, and then I'll, I'll call you later, man. Have a good day. Before we had all this technology, we'd have to hold the person, say, wait a minute, I need to get your statement. Now I'm leaving. Well, just tell me what happened. And we'd have to stop everything and start taking notes on this person leaving. Now, a little bit easier to be able to contact them later. All right, let me get your statement. Let me find my notebook real quick, all right? You guys actually saw it happen? No, I was telling the uh, telling sergeant when I was coming uh, when I was coming down, <laughs> I was coming down Jones Sausage, or come across Jones Sausage, get on 40. Okay. Coming up this way, Capitol Boulevard. He passed me. I was going about 65, 68. He passed me with, the, I mean, like I was standing still. So he's going 65, he passed him like he was standing still which means probably he was in excess of 100. And he's got all these loaded, heavy, I think, marble or uh, granite things in his in his truck, which made it unstable, which means you have weight shift, uh, all kind of stored potential energy when you change lanes. Then you add speed to that and changing legs and braking. And then you add drunk driving. And it's, it's pretty much a disaster to what you're going to get a car turned over. And the okay. truck was sitting there doing like this right here, where it was overweight carrying all this marble and stuff, a granite. Okay. And then he almost hit the side of my truck. I bet he went two inches from me when he went by me. Scared the hell out of me. Okay. And then I, who was driving? I don't know who was driving, but when I come up and was trying to get the patients out of the car, out of the vehicle. You always want to try and get who's behind the wheel so we can get positive ID of the driver. Uh, we've already got a little bit that the son said they were driving, another witness said it, but you always want to really prove because if somebody dies, from this incident, it becomes a murder investigation at a minimum manslaughter, and you know things change. So you always want to make sure and tie down that driver behind the wheel. The guy with the net stuff was on behind the, the driver's side. He was on the driver's side. So everybody was already. Uh, he was not the one. He was not out. Uh, so the guy with the necklaces, he was. Hey, see, see. I don't know why they cut this out. Take, Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. So he's got a knife in his hand. And this fire department, dude, you big red truck people out there, don't be a hero. Now, I know these things will protect you from flames, and it may protect you if he slashes, but it ain't going to protect you if he slashes across your face, neck, or if he stabs. So unless they're making these out of Kevlar, and even Kevlar won't stop a knife, so unless it's knife ballistic protection, I wouldn't be standing to a drunk dude with a knife with a bunch of cops that he's already been yelling and screaming and punching cars. But that's just me. I mean, this guy's got the red hat on. He knows what's going on. I'm not doing this pausing. This is the actual video. Come here. No. Put the knife down. Put it down. Put. <laughs> so the guy says no and walks. These guys are just like staying around. Like, really? This guy's walking at a cop with a knife. Raise your hand. 
if I got any fire, red fire truck people out there, the big red truck people, raise your hand if you don't know what's going to happen next. If you're just confused and you don't know what's going to happen. A guy's coming at a cop with a freaking knife. The cop's going to end up shooting and you're going to be in a kill zone. Why aren't you bail? I don't get this. Put the knife down. Okay, so this guy gets the clue first. Oh, shit. I know what's happening next. I'm out of here. Put the knife down now. These guys are like, wow, look at him. He's got a knife and a cop's yelling at him with a gun. Let's see what happens. Dude, you big red truck people need more training. Put the knife down. So this woman, I'm assuming wife, daughter, something is reaching in trying to get the knife. This looks like another cop with a gun out. This cop looks like he has his gun out. Hey. You got cops surrounding, so you got this cop shooting this cop. This cop's going to shoot this cop. This cop's going to shoot this. And the cop over here is going to shoot the fireman. Man, we're going to have government taking out government all over the place if shit goes to fan right now. We can't rally. Hold the channel. Drop it! Okay, so here's where it goes. Possession of the child. I'm going to take my kid. Screw you. You're not going to tell me what to do. So now we have what turned into a vehicle accident overturn, possible drunk driver. We got a man with a knife threatening people, and now he's trying to take a kid, abduct a kid under knife point from the mom or from the scene. Yeah. Anybody know what's going to happen next? This, this is the big mystery. How to make this a big mystery. Confuse people so they don't know what's going to happen. So mom goes and grabs the other kid arm. So now we have tug of war. Hmm. Wonder what will happen next. Drop it! Senor! Senor! Drop it! So this actually ended pretty well. I'm kind of surprised he gave up the kid and mom was able to get it. I was expecting him to slash the mom in the face and then grab the kid and put the knife to his throat so they couldn't shoot him. But I guess I was wrong. Taser goes down like a bandit. Man, that taser is effective shit. You got to love a good taser. Okay? Taser works every time. Perfect. Wow. He's down. Everybody's safe. Who thinks this is over now because the taser works so effectively? Yeah, well, you'd be a dummy. I can't believe three, three or four cops are actually trying to go hands-on with a dude with a knife in his hand. I ain't doing that. I know you call me a big jackpot. You got a knife? Hey, it'll be knife versus gun. I'm not getting close to you. Hell no. And we have the big red truck people watching, wondering what's going to happen next. Gee, I wonder what will happen next. Hmm. This should be interesting. Holy shit, shots are fired? Man, a cop shot a dude with a knife trying to stab Who could have predicted that shit? Ray Charles saw that shit coming. Hey, hey, hey. 315 really, shots fired, shots fired. Officers oh, a 10-4, subject's down, he's still got the knife. So, I don't know if this guy's a cop or a firefighter. I thought he was a firefighter, but he almost gets it right here. He's lucky. This is why you don't walk up and try to handle a dude with a knife, especially a drunk dude with a knife. I mean, it's just, it's a no-win game. Either you get stabbed or you get cut or you get shot by a fellow officer. There is no upside to going hands-on with a dude with a knife. Sorry. Oh, 
So now the mom's upset, screaming that he just got shot. Okay, so right here, I don't know if he still had a knife. I'm a little, I'm okay with the cops up to this point. They've already shot him. They could have created some more distance. He's really not a threat to anybody. This guy holds his ground because he can. And when he gets up, he shoots him and he says the threat was still valid. Which, yeah, it is. I mean, the guy could lunge at him and, and strike him. But he could have moved. He could have moved these officers. I know, could have, would have, should have. Nobody's perfect. Evolving, rapid. I'm just saying, this doesn't look like they needed to shoot him again. Three times. No other officer shooting. This guy's going to say, hey. And, and this may be a legitimate thing. This guy got tunnel vision. I saw a guy with a knife. I wasn't looking at anybody else. As I was walking backwards, I was on a hill. I had nowhere to go. And the guy got up and I shot him. So make no mistake, when I'm picking on these cops or pointing out things that are problems and which doesn't look good to the public, this guy with the knife caused this. I get it. The point is government needs to be held to a higher standard. They're taught how to withdraw, retreat, create distance. They can, they know how to do that. When they choose not to do it, that's a problem. When they choose, when they say there's no duty to act, when they let children be shot in a school and the cop stays outside and the courts say he's good, he's got no duty to act. He's got no duty to act here. He could have backed away, but he didn't. So that's when they uh, uh, gain accountability for their actions because they had choices to do nothing and to back away. Just like these officers, just like this officer that didn't shoot, everybody made decisions. This guy made the decision to engage and shoot. So that's the issue when I point out these things. Hey, is everybody good? Now, you notice they're not showing a close-up of his hand with the knife here. I don't know if he has a knife or not. If he does, I mean, look, it's going to be justified. It, it would have been justified if all the cops would have opened up 500 rounds. Who thinks that every cop out there emptied their magazine that they would have found the cops' force unnecessary? Of course not. Once, If one guy's authorized to shoot, everybody's authorized to shoot. Don't hate me. I'm just telling you the law. So... Uh, it's going to be justified. But is it reasonable for the, these three shots here? I don't know. You're on the ground! So these guys don't even have their guns out. They're so far, they're like, I got my guns in a holster. Even after the guy's shot. This guy's already shot him once. These guys have their gun in a holster. Are they in fear? Well, no, Rick, they're not, because look how far they are. They're safe. They're over. Well, why wasn't this guy this far? Why was it? Why well, this guy's closer? He didn't shoot. Why was it? Why wasn't this guy with him? Those are just reasonable questions to question our government that we give people guns and the ability to shoot and kill people, and we need to make sure that they're doing it with responsibility and they're not just doing it because they can, and they're not setting up to shoot pesky citizens, which is where I think we're at. I don't think cops try not to shoot people anymore. Now, obviously, these guys didn't shoot, and they got away. This guy didn't. Hey, hey. So, is it the shooter again? Three more rounds. Does he clear his backstop? Is everything safe for him to shoot? Eh, everything's fine. It'll be all right. So I can't tell if he has a knife or not. Since they have a circle around it, I'm thinking he must still have the knife. Put the knife down! So this guy's so close, he almost slipped and fell into the dude. If he'd have fell on the dude and he got stabbed, they'd have shot him more.
Sigrid. Drop the knife. Take Smith aside. I... This guy, I don't think, has his gun out. Got him. Get Smith aside. I got him. I got him. Okay, so I know I'm going to say this and people are going to say, Rick, you're just being, you know, you think you're a perfect blah, blah, I'm just telling you, dealt with many guys with knives. The second he went down with that taser, it would have been a dog pile, either by me, my partner, or all the officers. We would have jumped on his ass and one or two of us would have went for that arm with the knife and locked that arm up. I mean, he went down. He was in, in, incapacitated for a couple seconds. That would have been enough to dogpile him. But in today's culture, it's just like, why do we want to go hands-on when we can shoot everybody? And it's going to be justified. I'm not saying these cops should have jumped on him. I'm not saying that's the only way to handle it. And I'm not even saying these cops were necessarily wrong, except maybe the second volley. But I, we got to question government. I know you people are going to come here that love the cops and say you're just hating on the cops and picking on them. The people that hate the cops are going to say you're trying to be too nice. You're cops explaining. I'm sorry, people. Government should be held accountable and to a very high standard. And that standard should be enforced. And if you don't make them accountable, then it's not enforcing the standard, which means there is no standard. And that's how you get tyranny. All right? That's my take. We'll end that there.